disciples to all the world. It's in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where we are told that we would be given power to fulfill the mission of being witnesses. But here in Acts chapter 2, it teaches us that before the Spirit can give us power to get the world right, mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Spirit must first get the church right. Mm -hmm. Before the Spirit can give us power to go bring the world to Christ, the Spirit must first make us one in Christ. And that, that's the reason why this whole sermon, it really hangs on one fundamental point. I'll give you the sermon focus again. I gave it to you last week. It ain't changed. Uh, it's the same one. Here's what it is. Sermon focus is simply remember that it is only through the Holy Spirit who serves as the unifying force that we are enabled to function as one body to carry out one mission. The Holy Spirit is the glue that brings us together so that we can be one in Christ, but we all have to be submitted to the Holy Spirit so the Spirit can, can, can govern our action and take control over our lives because it's only then we can be one. There are some lessons that we learned from this church, which is the blueprint for the New Testament church. The first thing we discovered, which we, we talked about, that took the whole sermon. So if you want to hear it, go back and listen to it again. But let me just give you the clip note version. First thing was, is that we learned that we must be steadfast in growing in Christ. Be steadfast in growing in Christ because even with the presence of the Holy Spirit, when the 3,000 were added to the church, they did not automatically become disciples. Because disciples are not born, they are made. And it takes a process, somebody say a process, that we must... Um, take heed to in according to scripture and invest time in to make sure people can mature in Christ so that they can become a disciple. There's consequence that shows us what they did was they showed us that disciples learned the word because it says that they were steadfast, they were devoted to the apostles' doctrine. That was the teachings of Christ because Jesus said, teach them to obey all things I have commanded you. That, they, that these were individuals that recognized that through the process that disciples embraced fellowship. Because they understood the partner of the, the power of partnership. That, that, that discipleship is not to be lived out on an island. I need community. I need people in my life to help me be better and so that I can do better. Right. It's also disciples understanding the meaning of breaking the bread. That, that when we partake of the Lord's table, it's a reminder that my salvation didn't come because of my works. It's a reminder that my salvation became, came as a consequence of a sacrifice that was made for me. And then it says that disciples, they were praying because what disciples understand is that prayer is not just a tool to use to get what we want from God, but prayer is our lifeline that helps us to stay in tune with God. And here's what we understand, church. I got to move, but I got to give you this real quick nugget. And that is the process, verse 42, verse 43, it lets us know that fear fell on everyone. That there was this holy reverence for God. There was this awe of God because they'd gone through a process that they had a higher uh, level of respect and reverence for God, meaning they had a God consciousness. And because they went through the process, the text says, signs and wonders were performed. Here's what I'm saying. Many of us want to skip 
to signs and wonders. That's the power. But we can't skip to the signs and wonders and skip and get beyond and avoid looking at the word of God and prayer and fellowshipping with one another. What I'm saying is, before you get to the supernatural, you got to learn how to practice uh, the principles of God's word. I'm saying you trying to get to a miracle, the Lord says, won't you get my word and learn how to pray? Because when you do what you can do, I will do what you cannot do. But then here's what I want to pick up because secondly, the second lesson is be sincere in your love for Christ. That's what we have to be. Be sincere in your love for Christ. Because church, the more you learn about Christ, the more you fall in love with Christ. The more I read his love letter, the more and deeper I grow in love with Jesus Christ. And this growth stimulates intimacy. I love him more and more each day. But the key to this love in this text is that their love for Christ was evident in how they loved each other. John chapter 13, verse 34, 35, Jesus says, this new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. He says, by this, we'll all know that you are my disciple. You do understand that the ID badge for a disciple is our ability to love one another. In other words, the world ought to be able to look at our love and know we belong to the Lord. But if you look at verses 42 through 47, you will notice something. You will notice that if you studied and, and literally you parsed every word, what you will not see is the word love. You won't see it one time in verses 42 through 47. You, you, you won't... You, you won't see at no point where Luke used the word love to describe their relationship. But although the word love is not in the text, love is in the text. Although he doesn't use the word love, the manifestation and the demonstration of love is woven throughout this text because their actions were speaking love. See, love is not just what you say. Love is about what you do. See, I don't need nobody telling me that they love me and love me and don't you know how much I love you, but they never show me because y'all, that ain't love, that's lip service. Real love puts some actions behind it. When we look at this text, it's evident that they were sincere in their love because when there's authentic, genuine love that comes and flows from Christ, it produces something. Yeah. Two things it produces. Number one, it produces unity. Yeah. Let the church say unity. Yeah. Verse 44 says, now all who believed were together and had all things in common. That Greek word, epituato, uh, is the word where we translate together. What it literally means is on the same thing. Uh, it means on 